you know, we want to help you stay active until the day you die, you know, until you no longer are living. We want you to be moving, be active. And, and so we thought, you know, exercise for your life, lifetime, exercise for your lifetime, right? So the length of your life. But we realized that when we started thinking, oh, exercise for life would be perfect, that it also encompasses this idea that it's not only, not only exercising for the length of your life, right? But it's also exercise to live. Welcome to the Exercise is Health podcast, where we're talking about exercise, health, and the interconnectedness of the two. We are your hosts, Charlie and Julie, and we will be coming to you every single week from our studio, Muscle Activation Schaumburg. Hey, welcome back, everybody, to the Exercise is Health podcast. We are your hosts, Charlie and Julie, and we are coming to you from our studio, Muscle Activation Schaumburg in Schaumburg, Illinois. Now, at Muscle Activation Schaumburg, we believe your health is your most valuable asset. Your health is one of the biggest influencers of the quality and quantity of time that you have. And while there are many aspects of health, our expertise is exercise. Exercise has been proven time and again to not only improve your health, but also increase your longevity and improve your quality of life. And today, we are talking about exercise and about some concepts that we feel very, very strongly about here at Muscle Activation Schaumburg, and it's this idea of exercising for life. And this is a fundamental concept to how we operate with our clients, how we operate from our content production, and kind of our overall viewpoint on exercise and health as a whole is that exercise is something that you should be able to do for the rest of your life, and it's something that should help you live the life that you want to live. And so our biggest goal at Muscle Activation Schaumburg is to help our clients exercise for life. And today, we are talking about five principles that we incorporate with every single workout session here at Muscle Activation Schaumburg to help our clients exercise for life. Now, when we talk about exercise for life, this actually became our, what do you call those? Like Slogan. mottos? Slogans. Yeah. This actually became our slogan because when we were thinking about it, we we're like, why the heck should people come to see us? You know, when we were creating our business and putting together our plan and, you know, the thing we first thought of was exercise for life because, you know, we were starting to share, we started noticing that there was a common message when we were explaining what we did to our clients and explaining our intentions with our clients. And we would say stuff like, you know, we want to help you stay active until the day you die, you know, until you no longer are living. We want you to be moving, be active. And, and so we thought, you know, exercise for your life, lifetime exercise for your lifetime, right? So the length of your life. But we realized that when we started thinking, oh, exercise for life would be perfect, that it also encompasses this idea that it's not only, not only exercising for the length of your life, right? But it's also exercise to live, right? Because exercise can be used in a whole bunch of different ways. And one of the ways we see a lot of is for sports and athletics, right? You exercise so that you can compete or play, which is a great reason to exercise. You can also exercise to lose weight. That's another reason. But one of the biggest things that we encourage with our clients is exercise to live the best life that you can, to live the lifestyle that you want to live. It is so important that you are keeping your body healthy so that you're able to do the stuff you want in your life. So that is what exercise for life is all about. And that is why we are so honored that you follow, you know, this podcast. But this podcast is going to be particularly five principles that will help you do just that. Yeah, exactly. So like Julie was saying, we have five principles that we want to give you today that if you start incorporating them into your workouts, they will help prolong the longevity of your ability to work out. And what we mean by that is they are going to help ensure that you're able to keep exercising day after day after day, which like Julie was saying, that's one of our fundamental goals here at Muscle Activation Schaumburg. So we want to share these principles with you. They're super applicable. We're going to explain how to apply them to your workouts and hopefully you can start injecting your workouts with them immediately and start seeing some really cool results. So principle number one is that understanding this that exercise is designed to create a change within your body. 
Okay, what does this mean? What, what, what does this mean? It's like, all right, yeah, obviously exercise, you know, we're trying to do something within our body. But so often the fundamental focus that people have when they exercise is on something external. They're trying to move the weight. They're trying to do, you know, more reps. It's all about something outside of their body. They're trying to play sports. But understand that the fundamental goal of exercise is to create a change within your body. And hopefully that change is a positive change. It's a health promoting change. Okay. So what does this mean? It means that decisions about exercise need to be made based on the changes you're trying to create within your body. So first and foremost, before you think about like what exercises you should be doing or what program you're on, you need to make a decision about what changes you are wanting to make within your body. And then you can start to design your exercise, like the exercises that you're doing, your choice of exercise and everything else from there, okay? If you're somebody that is, you know, wanting to put on muscle, you should not be doing the majority of your workouts as, you know, yoga or, you know, long distance runs or something like that. You're gonna have to make different decisions about what you're doing with your exercise when you understand that all right, your primary aim is to put on muscle. If your primary aim is to, you know, have your joints feeling better or your joints moving better, then how you exercise is different based on that primary aim. Because the goal of exercise is to create a change within your body. It's not about something outside of your body. And so having that focus will help you make better exercise decisions moving forward. Charlie, I think you're totally right. Like, here's the thing. Everyone exercises, right, to make some change, right? And we know that. But we don't always acknowledge that this change could be negative. (laughs) You know, we always think like, oh, if I exercise, it is good. It is positive. It is awesome. But like you were saying, really manipulating your exercise so that it creates positive change within your body because that's what's going to allow you to exercise for the long term. You know, I once had this conversation with client. I, I'll take that back. It wasn't once. I've had many conversations with clients <laughs> on this topic where, you know, we're talking about getting stuff done, done in the gym. And they'll come exercise with me and say, wow, that's the least amount of exercises I've ever done in a workout. Or wow, I'm not sweating. Is that okay? Did I work out? Oh, wow. I've never worked something like this. You know, so they're just acknowledging some of the differences. And this is why I think it's so odd and why people comment on it is because prior to, you know, working with someone like Charlie or I or any of our colleagues is that the goal is always doing the stuff, right? Is like getting the reps in, getting a million exercises in, getting the weights up and down, whatever. But the goal when you work with someone like Charlie or I or the the way we study exercise is the outcome is the what is how are you leaving today? I don't care if you did 90 squats or nine squats. I care that you left better, stronger, more stable, more able, more prepared to recover. Right. So all these things. And so use your exercise to really be able to say, yes, I left my workout and it's going to help me achieve my long-term life goals with exercise. Absolutely. Now, moving on to principle number two. Principle number two to help you exercise for life is understanding that exercise happens within your body, not outside of your body. Okay, what does this mean? All right, kind of tying back to principle number one. When you're doing exercise, you need to be focused on what is going on within your body. You're not focused on doing more reps. You're not focused on lifting more weight. You're not focused on trying to move faster. You need to be focused. If you are trying to exercise for life, you need to be focused on what's going on within your body. And especially when you're doing something like resistance training or lifting weights, okay? 100%, you need to be focused on what's going on within your body because within your body is where you're trying to create those changes, You can lift a 10-pound weight 100 times, and it's still going to be a 10-pound weight. It doesn't matter how many times a weight goes up and down. What matters is what happens within your body while that weight is going up and down. And so it's within your body where your focus needs to be. And so that's why this is such a strong principle for us is because the changes that you're trying to make in order to be able to exercise for life are happening within your body. And the changes that you're trying to make during your exercise session are happening within your body. 
You need to be focused on what's happening within your body so you can monitor what's going on and so you can help to make sure that you reduce your risk for injury, you can stay more in tune with your body while you're doing your workouts as opposed to just trying to gut it out, just trying to push as hard as you can, just trying to lift as much weight as you can or move as fast as you can and not take stock in what's going on with your body while you're doing all that. So from a longevity perspective, from an injury prevention perspective, from a results perspective, taking the focus of, all right, I need to keep my mind on what's going on within my body while I'm doing my exercise is an absolute must if we're talking about trying to be able to exercise for the rest of your life. So yes, Charlie, what what you have just brought up, that exercise is happening inside your body, not outside, is a huge one. And it is so huge and we emphasize it so much. Probably it's also even more emphasized because no one does it. So we have to keep That's talking true. about it because <laughs> no one does it. And as soon as someone tries it, they're like, what? That was so different. So when you're exercising, not thinking about the weight going up and down, but thinking about what muscles should I be feeling? What can I stimulate and what can I activate while I do this? And can I connect with that muscle? Am I feeling it correctly? It's a great way to not only monitor your body, keep it safe, keep it um, protected from injury, but it's also a great way to make sure you're targeting the right tissues, make sure you're actually connected to that certain area of your body or whatnot. So definitely making sure that while you're exercising, acknowledging that exercise only changes you because of the internal happenings. So really tuning into feeling your body as you exercise, not distracting yourself while you exercise. Absolutely. Making sure that you're staying focused while you're exercising. I mean, we can't emphasize that enough. Like like you said, Julie, we say it all the time and we say it in part because it's so important. We say it in part because still people aren't doing it. And and so we feel like all right, we keep saying it. Maybe the people that it has caught on with, they love it. It's like it's a total game changer because all of a sudden, they start to feel their body in ways that they didn't feel before. And all of a sudden, exercise is not as detrimental to their body as it was before because they're actually paying attention on when they're getting fatigued. They're actually paying attention on when things may not feel as optimal as they, you know, throughout the workout as it did at the start. And so then they're able to modify their exercise accordingly and they become a lot less beat up with their exercise or from their exercise. And so that is a huge piece that needs to be taken into consideration. That kind of leads us into principle number three, which is the current state of your body needs to be taken into consideration before you exercise and while you are exercising. Okay. What does this mean? This means that before you go and work out, Run through your body and just kind of see how different areas of your body you're feeling. How's your neck feeling? How are your shoulders feeling? How's your upper back, your mid back, your low back feeling? How are your hips feeling? How are your knees feeling? How are your ankles feeling? You know, run through each of those areas and just see how things are feeling. Is one area a little bit tighter than what you remember? Is one side a little bit tighter than another side? Does a certain area of your body just feel fatigued? How are you generally feeling overall? Does it feel like you're having, you know, a headache come on? Do you feel really like amped up and ready to go? Do a diagnostics check and then tweak your workouts accordingly. Okay. If you're going in and you're like, oh, well, my program says today I need to do, you know, eight sets of squats, but you're not feeling up for eight sets of squats. Don't do eight sets of squats. Look, you're not, you, you, what you're training for is to be able to come back and work out the next day. Number one. And number two, to be able to do all the things in life that you want to do. All right. Now, if you're sitting there and you're saying, well, I really want to be able to do eight sets of squats, then do the eight sets of squats. That's what you want to do. But if you're thinking, oh, I'm just not feeling it today. I'm just not up for it. Don't do the eight sets of squats. It's, it's not going to be the thing that makes or breaks you. Like, listen to your body. And if you need to cut your volume in half or whatever, do what your body is saying would be appropriate for you on that day. That means not trying to work through pain. That means not doing the no pain, no gain. That means not trying to just, you know, keep pushing. This thing will work itself out. But listening to your body and if something feels tweaked, if something feels funny, changing your exercise accordingly, 
looking to get it addressed and making sure that you can come back the next day and keep working out and making sure that you can keep doing the things in life that you want to be able to do. Now, while you're saying that, Charlie, I just kind of wanted to insert my comments that, okay, you're al- you're allowed to be lazy some days and you're allowed to push yourself when you're feeling lazy and you don't feel like doing your squats. But what Charlie is saying is listen to your body. So if you are actually fatigued, you know, you are underslept, you are malnourished, meaning you ate poorly or you didn't eat enough or your joints are feeling weird. That's different than just laziness, right? Yeah, that's different than saying, oh, I, my body's telling me to, you know, lie on the couch and watch Netflix today. That That's not what we're saying, okay? Yes. So I just wanted to say that. Um, But, you know, Charlie's absolutely right. So often we, you know, flick the workout video on and say, oh, this is our workout for today. Or you walk into that workout class or you have a pre-planned workout that you're going to do without assessing how your body's doing. And sometimes you Clients will even say, well, you know, I'm never competing with anyone else. I'm just competing with myself. Last time I did 10 squats. So today (laughs) I have to do 10 or more. But today you have to remember you're a different person than you were Mm -hmm. then. You had a different day at work. You have different mental, emotional stressors. You have different chemical and nutritional stressors probably different orthopedic stressors. So being mindful of how you enter the workout will really help morph where you can go from there. So incorporating this in with a previous point that we had made with, you know, we want to make this exercise create change in your body and we're saying positive change, right? Is that you almost have to think of your body as like this being that you're entering this stress and we add a stress to this being to create some positive change. Mm -hmm. Now remember that being your body comes in a different thing every time and so that stress that workout that you have to do needs to be different so that you can so that you can try to bias towards a more positive outcome each time you know it's really interesting because one thing that i've noticed about exercise is people feel familiar enough with it that they feel like they can kind of do it on their own to an extent but they also feel unfamiliar enough with it that when they link up with a professional or somebody that's going to instruct them, they tend to follow it a little bit more like exactly what the person is saying versus other things. Okay. So, so let me explain what I mean. Um, so one time I had a client come in and the client's shoulders was really bugging her. And I said, well, you know, when did the shoulder start bugging you? Well, it was bugging me a little bit on Sunday. And then when I did this exercise class and we were doing this, uh, these, you know, these overhead presses and there's nothing wrong with overhead presses, but this was what they were doing in class. And, you know, it really started bothering me while I was doing the overhead presses. And then we started doing uh, snatches and it really started bothering me while I was doing the snatches, but I kept doing it anyways. I said, okay, well, did you, you know, did you talk to the instructor? Did you say, you know, well, maybe this isn't for me today? And they said, well, no, I mean, that that's what they told me to do. And like, who am I to say that, you know, I shouldn't be doing it. And I thought, well, it's a really interesting perspective because it's like, if we went to a restaurant, all right, and we ordered, uh, shoot, if we ordered a steak and, you know, we wanted it uh, medium and it came out well done, we would say, well, maybe the chef didn't actually, you know, maybe this world-renowned chef didn't know that I actually wanted it medium. And we'd send it back. Or, you know, some of us might send it back, but we'd say something. A lot of us would say something. Or if we went and we ate a food that we didn't like, regardless if, you know, how famous the chef was or whatever, we'd say, ah, you know what, this really isn't for me. But for whatever reason, for exercise, a lot of times we find people, or we find that people, rather, choose to, who because somebody's instructing them to do it, they're just going to kind of keep pushing through and they're just going to, you know, gut it out and, you know, just kind of get through it. And, oh, the, the person who's instructing me must really know what they're talking about because they're the ones staying at the front of the class. And to be completely honest, that's not the case. So what my, the whole point of this rant is I want to give you permission to be able to say, you know what, today this exercise isn't for me. Just like if you'd go to a restaurant and they were serving food and you're like, you know what? I thought I wanted this piece of salmon, but you know what? I'm eating it. It's not agreeing with me that much. Today, this food isn't for me. 
have that same mindset with your exercise. If you're doing something, regardless of who's instructing you to do it, and it's not feeling well for your body, be able to say, you know what, today this exercise isn't for me. It doesn't mean it's not for you forever, but for today, it's just not the thing that your body is wanting. Charlie, that's a really good analogy and you really wrapped it up really well, meaning today it's not good for me. And I like that because I was thinking about another common conversation that I have with my clients that you, while you were talking, I was thinking about this and I thought it would be appropriate to share. And then I thought of an amazing analogy that I'm also going to share because this is how it works in exercise and the more that we can view this how it really should be, the better. So a lot of clients will, you know, they come in and they notice that we train people very differently and they like it. So they want to learn, well, how could I start doing this on my own? Which is an amazing question. I love it because that means that they want to try to applying this kind of exercise on their own, in their own workouts or include it or whatever. And so, you know, let's take a normal exercise like a bicep curl. And let's say I've seen this client five times or whatever. And they're like, so when I do my bicep curls, how much weight should I do? And how many reps? And so it's a very, I understand where the question comes from because those are the specific facts that you need to know. Like you're going to walk into the gym and do a certain weight and a certain amount of reps. And they'd like me to tell them a certain weight and a certain reps. And what's interesting is that the amount of weight and the amount of reps will change, right? I don't know how many, how many, how much weight and how many reps. I could tell you what we did last time but I don't know what we're going to do today and I don't know what you should do next week. And for some reason, knowing the weight and knowing the reps for people makes us feel like we're doing the exercise correctly and at the appropriate amount. And as I was thinking about this, I thought of this analogy and let's see if, let's see if I can explain it correctly. So I want you to think about like your life of styling your hair. This may be, this is actually applicable to men and women. Think about like how you styled your hair in high school. Like think about your high school picture and think about how you styled your hair when you graduated college and think about how you styled your hair today, right? And let's say you go to, you know, your hairdresser and you're like, okay, well, I'm going to get my hair cut or trimmed or, you know, faded or however you get your hair cut. And there's a way that you like it done, right? And it looks good on your head right now. That's the way you do it right now. But remember, we talked about the way you did it 10 years ago was different than now. And the way you did it five years, at least I hope it's different (laughs) or else you're still having a mullet or whatever. (laughs) But have you ever been at the hair hair, hair stylist and they like do a little switch on you and say, hey, let's try this. And you're like, okay. And you try it and it works and it looks great on your head, right? And in that moment or in those next few weeks, you style it like that because it works. It's doing well. You look good with it. You feel good. Your hair looks great. Your hair's healthy, whatever. And so what's interesting is that it works and so you can do it. And so with exercise, sometimes a lot of things work. There's not like one answer. It's not like that one hairdo stays in style for forever. And sometimes it's like, oh, we tried something new and hey, I love it. Feels great. Looks good. My hair looks great. My husband thinks it's really cool looking, you know? So sometimes with exercise, it's really not like, how should I cut my hair and how should I blow dry it? Please tell me those two answers. And it's like, well, it depends. Are you going, are are you feeling, did you wake up late? Are you, you have an hour to do your hair today? Is it 1990? Is it 2019? What's going on, right? So it depends on what is the current state of your hair? How are you entering this hair? So what I'm trying to say is that there's not a how much weight and how many reps should I do? And there is for that day, but there's no way to predict what that's going to be. There's no way to, like we could kind of predict, like I kind of know how Charlie's going to style his hair tomorrow. But I don't know how he's going to style his hair in, in five years. Right? I've been getting my hair cut the same way for the last four years. Okay, well, it's almost time <laughs> you to <know>, switch then. <laughs> but you guys see what I'm saying. So, so when you think about it like that, think about applying that to your exercise. That every day, you know, you're entering in a new way, right? Like you might have a funky hair day or you might wake up late or your stylist might have inserted something new into your cut or something. But just knowing that there is not like one right way, but there's a whole bunch of right ways. And so when we're thinking about this point of analyzing how you're entering your workout or taking into account how you're entering your workout, any way you enter your workout, 
good news. There's a way that you can challenge your body to create a positive outcome. It's just your job, or if you're working with the trainer, our job to figure out what that is. And it's probably not going to look like what you did last time. No, absolutely. And so to just kind of move forward with this into principle number four, this kind of bleeds right into it, which is you must be able to recover from your exercise. Okay. And so the whole point that Julie was saying is like, okay, we don't know exactly what you're going to need to do on this day. And in part, because we don't know what's going to be appropriate for you on this day. And if you do something that's not appropriate, you're not going to be able to recover from your exercise. But here's the thing. If you want to be able to exercise for the rest of your life, you need to be able to recover from your exercise. Okay, what does this mean? It means if you are chronically feeling fatigued after your workouts, if you're chronically feeling beat up, achy, or sore after your workouts, that's not a good sign. Like collectively, as an industry, we need to move past this idea that feeling sore and achy and beat up after your workouts is a sign of a good workout. It's not. It's a sign that what you did at some level was grossly inappropriate for your body. And so if your goal when you're working out is to make yourself feel achy and beat up and sore, you can be able to do that for the short term, no problem, but you're not going to be able to keep that up long term. And so instead, if your goal is to be able to exercise for life, when you wake up one morning, you feel achy and beat up and sore after your workout, you need to think about, all right, what do we do during that workout and how can we adjust what we did in order to be able to wake up and not feel achy and not feel sore after your workouts? I mean, I feel like personally, I feel like I push myself pretty hard with my workouts. Sometimes I push myself harder than others, but I feel like overall, I feel like I push myself pretty hard with my workouts. But I mean, I can tell you, I, I can't remember the last time I actually felt sore after a workout. But I've made consistent progress with my strength. I've made consistent progress being able to put on muscle. And all the things that we think only come from getting sore and achy and beat up from our workouts, I've been able to get those results without feeling achy and beat up and sore after workouts. So the achy and beat up and sore is completely independent of getting the results. And so the biggest thing is you have to, you have to, you have to be able to recover from your workouts in order to be able to actually get the results from your workouts because those results are not going to come from working out one time. They're going to be able to, they're going to come from working out time and time and time and time again. And you're only able to work out time after time after time if you're able to recover from the previous one. You know, that's probably the most important point when it comes to exercise. It's interesting because people exercise to create some change, right? To stay healthy, to get healthier, to move better, to get stronger, whatever your goal is with exercise. And we forget that these changes are not the exercise, like doing bicep curls, doing hamstring curls, whatever it is. Those are not the thing that bring about the change. The thing that brings about the change is the adaptation, which is recovery. Like it is the part after the workout. So the biggest thing that I ask my clients, especially with new ones that I'm not as familiar with their bodies is how did you do after last time? Because I'm asking them, how did your body recover? You know, if they say nothing, then Cool. That means that we did something and I didn't overdo something in that workout, which is really great. So we want to see that you're fully recovering and adapting to each workout, which means that you're getting the change that you're actually seeking. It's always interesting when newer clients start up because like most people, we're kind of saturated with this idea that, you know, we need to be feeling sore after our workouts. And so if I felt like there was definitely been times in the past where new clients have come in and they're almost telling me like how they felt if they, if they felt sore, they're almost trying to tell me that as like, Oh, it was a good thing or like, Oh, it was a good sore or, or something like that. And trying to have these conversations like, Oh no, no. If you're, if you're feeling that way, that means we need to adjust something, right? Like that's, that's not the goal. The goal is not to have you feeling beat up and achy and sore. The goal is to be able to have you come back, and be able to work out just as hard and do you know all the same stuff that we did and have no negative repercussions from that. And so if you're feeling like, oh, wow, I'm not at 100% the day after my workout, then that just means we need to you know take it down a couple notches, and that's totally fine. You know, we all can overestimate 
what we think we can tolerate during a workout. All right, we, we all have that ability. But the issue arises from when you are continuously overestimating what you think you can do and what you think you can tolerate every single workout. And so if your body can really only tolerate, you know, working out for 30 minutes and you keep trying to push for 45 or an hour, well then guess what? You're going to feel achy and beat up and sore every single time after you work out. But if you can acknowledge that, okay, yeah, you know what? I overdid a little bit. Now we need to change that. That's really what we're trying to get after here is like, it's okay if you wake up feeling achy and sore and whatnot from your workout. It's not okay if you go and you do that exact same workout expecting a different result the next time because you need to change what you're going to be able to do in order to help your body tolerate and improve. Now, there, will, there may very well come a time where you can do that same workout and wake up feeling just fine. Totally cool. But in the interim, there needs to be some adjustments that need to be made. And that kind of feeds back into principle number three, which is the current state of your body needs to be taken in consideration. So see, these principles all kind of flow together. And, and then principle number four, you must be able to recover from your exercise, which actually flows into principle number five, which is the final principle. And that is exercise consistency is key. Okay. So we're talking about being able to recover from your exercise and being able to work out day after day after day. Exercise consistency is absolutely key. Okay, being able to work out day after day after day and build from one day to the next and build on, on that and build on that and build on that. That's how you start to see really cool results from your exercise over a long period of time. And that's really where the magic of exercise is, is being able to consistently exercise day in and day out, week in and week out for years on end. And that's what we try to help people do with exercise is be able to not just exercise for the short term, not just be able to, you know, do a 90 day challenge or something like that, but really be able to exercise day after day after day, because that's where we're going to see the compounding benefits of exercise from a health perspective, from a, what you're able to do during your life perspective, and from just an overall how you're feeling, how you're functioning, and and being able to enjoy all the things in life that you want to do perspective. Another way that you can see lack of consistency in your workouts is, do you know someone, or maybe this is you, that exercises, builds, and does great, at least they say they're doing great, for a couple months, and then every couple months they have to take a month or two off because they've injured themselves, right? And this kind of happens on a cyclic way. Maybe this happens twice a year. So maybe they work out for like four or five months and then they have to take a month off because they're injured. This is another way that you can see inconsistency because your body is taking on these small injuries, you can almost think, like these lack of recoveries, not this area not recovering, that thing not recovering, that thing not recovering. And it and it kind of builds into this chronic thing for five months, you know, and then you break and you can't keep exercising. And you recover for a month, meaning doing nothing, meaning getting no exercise benefits, getting none of those really potent joint joint health, heart health, brain health, chemical, the internal chemical, endocrine health things. So making sure that, hey, if you identify with or you know someone that's like, you know, I do great for five months and then I had to take a break for a month or maybe your cycle is two months. But figuring out how can I better recover? How could I, you know, maybe apply some of these principles better so that I can be more consistent? Because it is so important that you're not taking a month off, two months off. There becomes a point where that month, you know, I don't know your your mindset, but that month might turn into two months or might turn into three months. Or as we see a lot in the aging population is like, you know, we talk about this a lot with like broken hips. It's like, oh, I was so active and then I fell and broke my hip and now I'm zero active. So they weren't active enough to be strong enough to recover from that. So you can kind of use that similar kind of principle where it's like, hey, we hope you built up enough health to tolerate a whole month or two without exercise, but I don't know. And will there become a point where your body can't tolerate 
not exercising, right? That consistency of exercise. So figure out, use these principles so that you can use this fifth principle, which is the most potent principle of, of just be consistent. Figure out how to exercise so you can keep exercising for life. Yeah, and Julie, that, that's such an important point is the idea that, you know, hey, if you find that you are able to exercise, you know, consistently for three to four months and then you need to take a month or two off and you continuously repeat that cycle, guess what ends up happening to that month or two? It ends up going longer and longer and longer because across the board, what we see with people as they age is their recovery time. It, they need more recovery time from injuries. They need more recovery time from traumas that have happened to their body. Okay. Nobody is, you know, at 75 years old, springing back from injuries faster than they were at 15 years old. Okay. So the longer you live, Oftentimes, the longer it takes you to recover from these little injuries. So being able to make sure that you exercise in a manner where you don't incur these little injuries is such an important thing, especially as time goes along, because what used to be, you know, a month or two will start to build to, you know, 10 weeks will start to build to three months. And then all of a sudden you're going to be in the boat that Julie was talking about where it's like, yeah, I used to be really active. And then, you know, there was just these series of injuries because you're going to try to come back at one month and you're not going to be ready and you're going to incur another injury even faster. And then it will be just like, I haven't worked out for six months to a year. We see that all the time. And so in order to help people prevent that from happening, making sure that you can exercise on a consistent basis by following all these principles is a super important thing. So let's recap those real quick. Okay. Principle number one, exercise is designed to create a change within your body. Principle number two, exercise happens within your body, not outside of it. Principle number three, the current state of your body needs to be taken into consideration before you exercise and while you are exercising. Principle number four, you must be able to recover from your exercise. And then tying it all together, principle number five, exercise consistency is key. So I hope you're taking notes. If not, feel free, go back, replay this episode and write down what you think are your biggest takeaways from this episode because this is an episode that if you start implementing these principles, it will be a game changer for how you start to work out. So I hope it was somewhat entertaining. I hope it was mostly educational and I hope that you're getting information from here that you can start applying to your workouts because if you do, it will make all the difference 5, 10, 20 years down the road when you're exercising in this manner. So who do you know that needs to hear this episode? Who do you know that is inconsistent with their exercise or who feels like they're exercising really intensely, but they're taking way too long to recover because they're always achy and beat up and sore? Or who do you know that is not exercising regularly and is wanting to exercise, but they're a little bit concerned about maybe injuring themselves while they're exercising or not really sure where to start? Share this episode with them so they can learn about the five principles that they should be implementing with their exercise in order to be able to exercise for life. And while you're online, if you wouldn't mind, head on over to iTunes and leave us a rating and review. It helps us so much show up higher in these search results. I was looking online today. We have all five-star reviews across the board. I don't want to jinx it, but when people give us those rating and reviews, we're showing up higher and higher and higher on search results. And it's awesome because then people are able to find this information easier. So if you found value in this podcast today, if you found value in this episode, let us know by leaving us that rating and review. Well, thanks so much for tuning in. We always appreciate it. Have a fantastic week. We'll talk with you all next week.